here's something school probably didn't teach you about SQL. Or at the very least, you probably forgot. Uh, this is what happens when you actually click that little button on DB Beaver or whatever ID editor you're using. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure you kind of understand the general fact that, yeah, data and tables get selected. Uh, there's some filtering, etc. But there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that we just take for granted. So how does SQL work? and what actually occurs when you execute a query. In this video, we're gonna go through the various components and some of the steps that occur as you run a SQL query. So that way you understand a little bit better how SQL works. And that way, when you're writing queries and need to optimize them, or maybe if you're planning to do a startup that happens to replace SQL or make your own database, you kind of understand some of the initial components you're gonna to need to build. So let's go through it. Now I'm gonna point out as I'm going through this that there are slightly different names for components in different database systems. And for this video, I'll likely just be using the term SQL engine because nowadays, right, things are not just relational database management systems. You know, you don't just have MySQL, uh, Postgres, uh, Microsoft SQL Server. You also have things like Snowflake, Presto, uh, and other solutions that maybe are more broken out or maybe in some cases are just purely uh, the data processing component or the data engine or the SQL engine essentially. So just to kind of keep it general. But again, they all have slightly different namings for similar components and steps. So let's start with the parser and validation. When you send your SQL query, the very first step that all these systems have is some form of lexical analysis. And again, some database systems call it a lexical scanner, but it essentially breaks down uh, your SQL query into a series of what you can call tokens. Basically, these are the smallest units it can break down your SQL query into, and it generally breaks it down into a few key categories, such as uh, keywords, operators, identifiers, uh, and string literals. So this would be things like your select from where in terms of keywords, right? Like that's why you get keyword issues if you accidentally use them in the wrong way. Identifiers would be things like tables, objects, and columns in your actual database. And operators are kind of what you think, you know, your equal sign and so on and so forth. And it will essentially break it out into some sort of tree. From there, you will have some level of syntax check, which as this kind of suggests, it ensures that you're essentially following the appropriate rules with SQL so that your actual syntax makes sense, right? And this is even before essentially the next layer, which is the semantics check, which this is trying to ensure that the actual underlying uh, tables and columns that you're referencing are real and exist in those tables. So basically the full goal here is to make sure that your query is accurate. Um, and I'm gonna take this little snippet about MySQL um, from uh, the understandings of MySQL internals from O'Reilly. So we're gonna put this quote up. So basically just to understand kind of what's happening in the step. So in terms of MySQL, uh, MySQL parser, like many others, consists of two parts, the lexical scanner and grammar rule module. So you'll see two different kind of terms here. Uh, the lexical scanner breaks the entire query into tokens, elements that are uh, indivisible, such as columns and names while the grammar rule module finds the combinations of SQL grammar rules that produces the sequence and executes the code associated with those rules. In the end, uh, a parse tree is produced, which can now be used by the optimizer. So we're gonna put a, a parse tree up here, just so you can kind of see what it looks like. You can kind of see it's broken out uh, the query into its various components, like the selects, the from, you know, you see the identifiers there, etc. Now that we've parsed out your query, we can go to the next step, which is Again, different terms for different uh, databases. One of the terms used is an algebraizer. It could also be called something like a translator or a query transformer. Basically, you are going to take this query. And again, depending on the database system you're using, your query might actually be converted into what is known as relational algebra, which is essentially the underpinnings of a database system. It refers to all the things like joins uh, and projections and a few other key terms that you're going to be using and translates it into that. Again, sometimes this is implicit, sometimes this is explicit where it literally just does uh, translation. Other times it's really just going to look at your query and look for the most optimal route of said query. But I've also read in a few places where they've said, you know, it'll actually build multiple forms of that relational algebra to figure out different essentially logical query patterns. So yeah, we're going to talk about logical and physical here in a second, but essentially the plan for how the query can be created and they'll put out as many as it thinks makes sense. And eventually when we go to the next step, which is the optimizer, it'll figure out which one of them is optimal. Now I'm gonna take a quick pause and say, okay, I reference logical query plan, and then there's the physical implementation of it. So when you write a query, there are a lot of choices that can be made, uh, especially on traditional databases, but you know, you have things like indexes, you have different types of joins that have nothing to do with your inner 
or left join. There are things called like hash, merge, and nested joins. And these different joins operate in different ways where some of them benefit from your tables being ordered or having a specific key that they can actually join on. Others just essentially loop through all the rows and have to kind of go through all the rows on both sides and all the combination of rows. So this is where, uh, if you're ever curious about where big O notation might come in handy, at least to understand uh, from a high level, this is this is one place because it does impact the way uh, these joins operate. But again, you could put inner join and how it gets translated into a physical query could be one of those joins. And in some cases, you might be limited on how much you can actually force that to happen. But I'll have to do a different video on different types of joins on top of, you know, inner, uh, left, etc. We're going to talk about those more physical joins in a different video. But yeah, so you have the logical query plan that gets created here, and then that gets sent to the optimizer. And the name kind of is pretty consistent across most database systems, I want to say. It was generally something like optimizer. And as that name suggests, it is going to be the thing that goes through and tries to figure out what is the optimal route uh, to run this query. Again, going back to those physical joins, you know, when to filter, when should it use an index? Does it have you know, query statistics on certain tables, it's going to look through all this stuff and try to figure out what is the optimal method to actually approach this query. And once it figures it out, or once it thinks it's figured it out, then it will send what is known as an execution plan. So you'll kind of notice we've taken a parse tree, we've sent the parse tree, and after the parse tree, we've had this, uh, we create a logical query plan, and after that, we've sent this to the optimizer, and it's figured out optimal route for that. Um, and now it's sending an execution plan to be executed on the data that you have. And if you haven't heard of an execution plan, you can actually many times either see the execution plan that your query ran or get an estimated query plan, generally in most database systems, usually using something like the explain plan query statement. And here's a few, uh, one from SQL Server, which is a lot of what I've seen, but you can also get it uh, in pretty much every database system. Then of course is probably the part you know, which is the execution. So the query actually then goes and executes itself. So now you get to see the results so it's going to go execute it. It's going to you know, give you the results. Now, there were a few steps that I skipped in here. For example, one thing we didn't really talk about is security, right? As you run this query, it's going to run uh, a check to make sure, hey, do you have access to these objects, right? Whether that's a stored procedure, whether that's a function, whether that's a column, whether it's a table, etc. cetera. Uh, interesting fact at Facebook, because we were using Presto, it didn't have security built in. So we had to build essentially like another layer just to deal with the security aspect, right? You've got the, the SQL engine and essentially you, before it hits that SQL engine, you're going to have the security layer that runs a quick check to make sure, hey, do you have access to all these tables that you're you're, you're trying to run against? And again, columns and so on and so forth. And the other thing I did mention was uh, a query cache. So in some cases, if it sees that it's the same query that you've run in the past, it might actually have a query cache of what you've already run. And so it might just run your prior query plan. So that is something for you to consider if for some reason your query isn't changing, even though maybe you're adding an index somewhere and it's not picking it up. Sometimes it hits the query cache and just decides to run that instead of looking for a more optimal route. Well, then guys, hopefully that was helpful in understanding how your query actually runs. And if you really like this video, please uh, feel free to like and leave some comments below and more questions. Uh, I'm kind of wanting to do a little bit of a back to the basics series. So if you like this, I'd love to do more of it. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks all. Goodbye.